Okay, so for today's lesson, you're going to need to roll your mat up. So while you're rolling your mat, so you come into a roll like this, I'll just bring the one I made earlier out. Now what you're going to need to do with this is to place it on your mat lengthways and then grab yourself, if you've got a couple of foam pads or something equivalent, maybe a brick, if you've got a brick that would be good or a few cushions, just something to put your feet onto. So I want you to come into this action of opening, opening your chest. So you're coming into a set of bander action. Now it's really good on a rolled mat. And the reason why it's so good is that you can really get a connection in the dorsal spine. And this is important for today's lesson. So taking the feet onto your support. If you find that you hyperextend your knees, then have another two foam pads underneath the knee area. And just be in this position, opening the chest open the chest. So take a few moments with this, just take a few moments so that you're able to understand that really lovely opening. If you do find it's a bit too much on the legs, on the knees, you can put your feet down as well. This is another way of working slightly differently. But you've got to really fold that mat that rolled mat right into the dorsal spine. Now you'll know if you've got it right because for some of you, you will be a bit locked in your dorsal spine, but you've got to see that it kind of just hits right in between the shoulder blades. And just take a few moments with this. This is such, a, such an important action in your practice today, this dorsal spine. Getting that dorsal spine nice and open is really key. So remember the breath when you're practicing this as well. The breath needs to be there. Really nice, soft inhalation and exhalation. All right, so we're not gonna be here too long. So if you've just got into it, then you'll just have to stay in it for a little bit longer. But otherwise, if you've been in it for a few moments, then bend your knees and roll to your right side. And you should really feel that very nice extension in your chest. So just sit with your legs crossed, hold on to the fronts of the knees and try to really express that imprint right in the back there. So you're pulling in. You get in that action, you get in that soft action really nicely. Okay, so that really is a bit of a test. So when we come for the next action, we we touched on this last time in our Bhujangasana. So I want you to just come into Bhujangasana. Now, you can come into variations of this pose if you know it's a bit of a troublesome one. You've got the rolled blanket, or should I say the mat, so you can place that underneath the top of the pelvic rims. But the legs to together today and then we press down and we just find where that connection is in our back. Push, pause. Now you've got to really get that chest nice and open as if that mat is still pushing into your back. So the back opens, not the arm extends. So this is one of the problems we have with this pose. The back opens, not the arm extends. So the emphasis in your Bhujangasana needs to be very much about the back really becoming nice and pliable rather than the arm straightening. And this is where we get a bit overly connected with this pose. We get a bit confused and everything gets very contained. Okay, so have a couple of goes at that. Remembering if it's really a challenge, then lift the frontal pelvic rim up and this will help you enormously. But don't forget 
that really nice little nudge in the dorsal spine between the shoulder blades. So even though it might ache or it might, you might find it really challenging, you need to open this area, this chest area. Those of you who are looking for vitality, energy, it comes with openness, chest cavities, so that you get your breath going. Such an important practice. So I'm hoping you would have done two or three practices with Bhujangasana now. Okay, and you can leave it there and release them. All right, just have a look at the screen for a moment. So we're going to come for Utkatasana, feet together. But same thing, we've done a lot of arm work in the last few weeks. So we're going to extend the arms, reach the arms up. Those of you who find it really challenging to take the arms higher than this, I will show you the alternative. So when you're in Utkatasana, the back action stays in your Bhujangasana, but you've got to work this whole area from the rib to the hip. It's got to see that you get that connection of length. So if you find it really challenging with taking your arms up, I know there's a few of you with a few difficulties with the shoulders, then you come into it this way. Your chest is still open. Your chest is still open. Okay, and then releasing and coming up. All right, take another look at the screen. So we're going to come into Utkatasana, get that action in the dorsal spine, then extend. Now the dorsal spine stays deeply connected, then we go back, touch the floor, Uttanasana. Now it may be that you think at this stage it's really too much to straighten the legs, then you have to use props. That's fine, that's what we're about. We can get you into these poses. And we can get you moving towards the classic pose. Now, when we come back into this action now, we've done quite a lot of this sort of work, coming into this bent leg action. Again, you may need to have some support for this action. All right, so, those of you who haven't started, I know some of you have already. So those of you who feel that when you come Utkatasana, Uttanasana and stepping back, it's a bit of a job, then you'll have your supports ready. Here, watch again. I want you to watch this little sequence because I know a lot of you will go straight away, this is the emphasis. The emphasis needs to be in your dorsal spine. So when you're extending up, you're softening the knees, yes, but this is deeply moving in and it's the sideways that lengthens from pushing these outer hips back. Uttarasana and then we come for the step back. Let me step back my other leg. So we step back. So you want to get as much action in the outer hip as possible. And then some of you will know this sequence in, we step back again. So we come into your Adha Mukha Svanasana. Adha Mukha Svanasana. Now the dorsal spine moves in strongly. Okay, so now we've got to step forward, same leg, step forward. And you might need to have those bricks handy, step forward. And then Uttanasana, feet together, dorsal spine in. Bend your knees, now the dorsal spine needs to go in. And then come up. Now that was a very important instruction. When you take the dorsal spine in, if you're doing Uttanasana like this, you're not taking the dorsal spine in. You may be congratulating yourselves, oh, I've got my hands down to the floor. But 
you have to see that you go with the action. So sometimes you may have to come to your Uttanasana in this way. So you get that understanding. Then we come for the Utkatasana. Dorsal spine in, dorsal spine in, dorsal spine in, dorsal spine in. Arms up, dorsal spine in. Dorsal spine in, dorsal spine in and up we come. Okay, so you get that action. This is really, really deep work now. So you get that work from that connection at the very beginning when we were coming into the Setta Bandha, the Bhujangasana action. Okay, let's go again then. So this time we take the left leg back. All right, so arms up. Dorsal spine in, soften the knees, dorsal spine stays. It's only the lower area of the abdomen and the legs that go back. Uttanasana, either floor or bricks. And now we take the other leg. Take the other leg back. Other leg back. So you use the other side. Take the opposite leg. So it should be your left leg back now. Go and see. Get that action. And then can you extend into Adha Mukha Again, dorsal spine in. Left leg forward. Left leg forward. If you need to have your bricks, have your bricks. And then bring both legs. Have them bent feet together. Dorsal spine in. Get the action in your Uttanasana. You might need to have bricks. Utkatasana. Utvahastasana. Okay, well done. So some sequencing, quite strong actions. Okay, we're coming down to floor level now. So we're coming for Urfa Mukhaswanasana. Now I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing it. Now when you come into Urfa Mukhaswanasana, you want to see at first when you start learning that the toes are tucked under, you're looking forward. Now that same action on your back needs to be there in, in, in. And then we roll up. So what happens quite often is that this action isn't actually understood and we try to go up. You can't go up because actually there's nothing connecting. So sometimes we have to say, well, we're coming to the action from here like that. So we've got two options there. All right, come on again with me now. Tuck those toes under. Lift in the back of the legs, lift in the front of the legs. Just look at the screen. Now I'm going to see I'm in my Setta Bandha action. Tops of the shoulders back. And all the way up. All the way up. Okay, <laughs> so you get the idea. Come on, have a rest and now one more time. Have another go. Go and see if you can get this action. So go on, see that you are getting that curvature of your spine nicely. And then going up. So you've got to imagine that you're going over that rolled mat over that rolled mat. You've got to imagine that you're going into that Setu Banda action. Get that dorsal spine moving. Practice this one. You need to get that imprint into your back to do good back bends. Okay, so we're going to put the hands down strongly. If you haven't already, another go. Come on, see that you roll the chest and lift up. If you're going into it in the way that you're flowing into it, then that's fine too. Whichever way you're doing, absolutely fine. And then release him. Watch the screen one more time. Have a look. All right. So when we come into it with flat feet in this position, we've got to really work our bodies. We've got to see that the buttocks are softer and we get to here. 
Oh, we get in that action on the chest and yes, we're coming into, the, you're familiar with this, Bhujangasana. But then I've got to really, I'm pulling the mat with me here, I've got to really pull myself through to get this action. Okay, so we get the idea of this action. So one more go if you can do with flat foot on the mat and then see, can you flow through? You've got to pull yourself forward, pull yourself forward. Okay, and release in. Okay, just take a moment or two, just rest for a moment. Have a look at the screen while you're having a rest. Okay, this time a bit quicker now. So we're going to take the arms up. Now, before I take those arms all the way up, I've got to see, lift up the dorsal spine in and then take the arms wherever they will go. And then, Uttakatasana, now the dorsal spine is in, the body lengthens, and then the hands go down, Uttanasana, going to show taking, my left leg back. All right, so my right leg is forward. So I'm going to be in this position. Look forward. Then both legs back. Left leg forward. And then I'm going to bring the front leg forward. And soften the knees. Dorsal spine in. Now we're coming into as if you were practicing your Urdhva Mukha. In the dorsal spine goes, in it goes, dorsal spine in and extend up. Okay, come on then, whole routine now. Stand at the end of the mat. Uttakatasana, take those arms up. Now see that before you take them completely, I know some of you have already started, but just keep listening to some of the instructions. Taking the dorsal spine in strongly. Utkatasana. So remember dorsal spine in, it's only the abdomen that slices back. You've got to slice the abdomen back and broaden the back spinal muscles. Keeping that action nicely. Uttanasana on bricks, whatever you need to do. Straighten those front legs. Step the back leg back now, left leg back. Put your hands on bricks if you need to. Okay, get that nice mo momentum in that hip area. We've been working on that a lot last week. Okay, step the other leg. Well done. Okay, left leg forward. Right leg forward. Uttanasana. Now get that dorsal spine in. Soften your knees, dorsal spine in. Arms up, reach up. Urfa hastasana. Okay, and release in. Okay, come on. Let's do the other side now. Okay, I'm gonna do it on the screen. Extend. Dorsal spine in, extend. Bend in the knees. Dorsal spine doesn't change. You gotta weight down with the buttock bone, extend. And then Uttanasana. And then we've got to see, take in right leg back this time. Pause. Get that nice movement in that outer hip. Both legs back. Right leg forward. Okay, then bring the legs together, feet together, Uttanasana. Soften the knees, dorsal spine in, taking the arms up. And then Urdhva Hastasana. All right, well done, good. Okay, so we're coming for Adha Mukha Virasana. So those of you find it difficult to bend your knees, then of course, do the chair version. This will help to open your backs. So those of you who are practicing the classic pose, 
and then just let yourself rest there for a moment or two in this position. Take a few breaths, just have a rest. Okay, and now release in. 